So hey guys, today we're going to be building a deck that can utilize this card here. You are finished. So you are finished has uh, the following effect. If 10 or more cards and or effects have been activated during this turn, so it doesn't specify the player, just total, right? So it can be like, uh, you activate 10, then summon your finish, your opponent uh, activates 10, then you summon your finish. Or like 5-5 five, five from both players. That would work as well. Special summon this card as an effect monster. Cyber, Stark, level 10, attack 3000, defense 3000. This card is also still a trap, but set it in your spell and trap zone during your end phase. So, uh, first question I have up to this point is, what happens if your spell and trap zone is full after summoning you are finished? Uh, can it just not return anymore? Hmm. And also, notably, this card has no hard once per turn. Okay, so once per turn when your opponent activates a card or effect while this card is in your monster zone, quick effect. You can destroy as many cards your opponent controls as possible, then set this card in your spell and trap zone. Just for example of a deck this might be, like, alright against. Just branded, right? So since this also sets itself, it assuming, like, you might have destroyed Mirror Jade with this for whatever reason, okay? Uh, then this will still set itself back, and you'll get to keep it. So, pretty interesting, right? So now we're just going to look and see what kind of deck activates enough times for you to actually activate your finished as early as possible on your opponent's turn. So, notably, you can special summon this whenever. So, if you want to, you could technically summon it in the draw phase. Although unlikely, right? Let's assume your opponent... Just like, is throwing, you have chain on, and your opponent just sets a random back row, okay? So no matter what it is, it's not relevant, right? But uh, let, let's assume that that's what happens, so... And let's pretend uh, Fluandries can actually special summon, okay? Well, they, they can't, okay? But imagine if they could, right? But how many actual activations would Fluandries do? Is it enough or you're finished? Let's see, okay. So, this is one, activate Dreaming Town. Two, Robina. And then, if they have M-Pen, which I believe they do, that is Chain 3, maybe? And then, I don't know what Fluandri's Robina is going to add. But, I, I guess you can add... Uh, I don't know. Token or Stree, whatever. So that's one, two, three chains right now. So one, two, three. And then normal summon Eaglin, chain four Eaglin effect. Eaglin adds, let's say, uh, Ryza or Apex Avian. Doesn't really matter. It's about the same. But if we did Ryza specifically, there are no targets on field right now. So yeah. But uh, okay. So normal summon Apex Avian. We can chain Robina. And th that is still only five chains, believe it or not, right? So if we were to activate Apex Avian, uh, this specifically says have been activated during this turn. So if our opponent activated something and we negate the activation, that only should count as one, I believe. So th then after Apex Avian effect, we're still only at six. A as crazy as that sounds. Uh, j just... Uh, around chain six and if we did add a uh, well special summon or not special summon normal summon whatever we added off of robina that only adds one more chain so at max we're at we're looking at about seven and this is flandries a deck that's really known for playing on your opponent's turn right so this is only seven chains we still need three more to activate your finished so surprisingly enough well well Laundry is just isn't enough. Well, not that you can special summon anyways because of the restriction on the flu cards, but it's kind of crazy just to think uh, about how this isn't enough. And this is change all monsters your opponent controls the face down defense position. So if we throw in a monster for our opponent to book a moon, then I, I believe this would only be eight, still two more. And our opponent doesn't necessarily have to do anything yet, so. Pretty awkward. I do say so myself. 
So then, uh, there's also another issue with like you're finished. Might as well mention this while we're here. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect, while this card is in your monster zone, quick effect, you can destroy as many cards your opponent controls as possible. So, this is only triggered by your opponent. So, hmm. If your opponent doesn't activate anything, th this doesn't really do anything. But if you had some way to force your opponent to do something, then um, it, it becomes more possible to activate this whenever you want. So there are already, like, a few cards that do destroy all cards your opponent controls. So I, I think those are honestly just better options for going first, considering they're also not a continuous trap, meaning the most mileage you'll usually get out of your finished is if... Uh, Specifically, you're going first, and you can set it up. So, if you were to go second, you would not be able to use this, right? So, assuming you have five other cards in hand, this is just one dead card, and then this would have to activate on uh, turn four, somehow. And you have to play through your opponent's board as well. And then your finish gets summoned at some point a after all this. So it's not completely useless going second. There are worse cards for going second, but just in general, it doesn't seem that great. So, uh, continuing on, let's take a look at Snake Eye. Snake Eye actually might be a slightly better candidate. So the, the idea that we're looking for is mainly to be able to summon your finished really fast. Even if we can't summon it in draw phase, which honestly, it's possible to summon you're finished in the draw phase, I'm pretty sure. But, um, let's see. If we have all of these cards here, okay? So we have all these Snake Eyes cards. Let's see what we can trigger here. So... Let's see what happens here. Hmm. So immediately, first things first is... I'm pretty sure we want to be able to send Flamberge to the graveyard somehow. So what what do we have on the field exactly? Amblo Whale, Flamberge, IP, IP, Flamberge, Amblo Whale. So you special summon IP with Snake Eyes Flamberge. That that is your first action, I guess, and then. There is potentially your opponent triggering Divine Temple of the Snake Eye. So let, let's assume we just have maybe a second Flamberge or literally anything else. Doesn't super matter what it is, okay? So this tri will get triggered as well, so that's two. And then we'll IP, so that's three. And then uh, we'll IP effect to send probably these guys for like, I don't know, Apo or something. And then we have Promethean Princess effect. And then potential Apo effect, and that's only five. And then Flamberge, other effect, seven, or not seven, six. And then that'll bring back Oak, Ash, Poplar. So that puts us at like eight or so. So we still actually would need two more. So assuming we, for some reason, play Birch, then what was the summon specifically? A Snake Eye monster from your hand or deck? That's not that great. Because I don't think there's anything we can summon to trigger anymore. Is there? Is there a soft ones per turn on this? Or no, there there isn't. Okay, so then we can well, let's assume we just summon Snake Eye Ash off of this because there's realistically not anything to summon anymore because we summoned Poplar back, Ash back, and Oak. Probably Birch back as well. Yeah. If we specifically do Ash to add Poplar, I think. This is around around 9 or 10. I kind of lost count at some point. So th this is kind of barely 10. So Snake Eye. Well, with a, a minimal help from your opponent. So you just mostly need your opponent to normal summon something. So if we take away Apo Effect, I think we're at either 9 or 10 right now. I kind of lost count a bit, but around 10-ish is what you're at with your finish, right? And assuming you have multiple you're finished, you can just special summon. Uh, you're finished multiple times. You can summon them all at once, honestly, if you really want. And then your opponent would uh, just get blasted here, you know? Destroy as many cards, your opponent controls as possible. Great.
Actually, let, let me see real quick. Yeah, okay, so no matter what, it goes back to the spell and trap zone. Okay. So this effect does it and the other effect as well. Okay, then. So I, I don't think there's anything else that I'll be activating, probably. Except may maybe this. Let's see, target one face up. The total level of Snake Eyes monsters you control are two or higher. Activate one of these effects. Target one face of monster your opponent controls or in the graveyard. Place it face up in its owner's spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. Target one monster card treated as a continuous spell on the field. Special summon it to your field. Wait, th this effect is actually kind of good. This is just super annoying, actually. Hmm. Against tier, imagine just putting like a Havness in a spell a trap zone. I, I don't know the exact ruling. I I'd need to check Havness, so getting a little distracted here. But l let's see. Confusion summon monsters from your extra deck by placing fusion materials mentioned out for your hand field and or graveyard and gleaning the scud from your graveyard. I'm not even sure about this ruling. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh moment. Uh, uh, I'm going to assume you cannot shuffle back a happiness in the spell trap zone. Because it says including this card from your graveyard. A and that, that, that's it. Okay. So if it's on field all of a sudden, shouldn't be doable. So, okay, next. Hmm. So Snake Eye might be able to do it, but it doesn't fully get there. What about, like, Vanquish Soul? So... Oh, uh, let's take a look. Okay, so we're going to activate Rosin Effect. Rosin Other Effect? You can always activate that, pretty much. So, Effect to protect itself from destruction, easy enough. And Rock probably is going to be what summons Rosin, so that's three. Uh, Xiaolong Effect to search, so that is four. And then you have like Caesar Valleyus effect and also a uh, heavy border effect. So that puts us at six. And if we activate uh, Vanquish Soul Snow Devil, that is going to be seven. So not quite enough. Even if we put Jialong in hand before resolving it, that is going to put us at eight. So if we specifically did it with Stake Your Soul to summon Jialong, I guess. But I guess Borger actually does have the ability to use the burn effect, so 9. If Caesar Valius actually can uh, activate its effect, that will put us at 10. But you need an Earth in hand, and you typically really just can't get the Earth in hand this easily. So, a bit tragic, but it is what it is. Okay, so that is going to be around 10-ish. Because our opponent probably did something if we activated Snow Devil, right? Snow Devil should count as one effect, I think, unless these count as multiple somehow. Uh, I, I believe we're at barely 10 if we activate nearly every single card we can possibly activate. Like, within reason, right? So, hmm, yeah. Not super great, but... Uh, th this should be close and we still have zones for like you're finished and interestingly enough if we're if we're like in a position to do your finished first your finished can be returned before we activate like soul snow devil so that's a little bit interesting but we can't do this that that like as much as we would like to like on following turns because there is potential of running out of search targets for Zhao Long, so I guess Zhao Long can still at least change battle positions. But you do run out of targets for like Rouse and Search, so there there is that I guess, and we oh, we can't recycle Snow Devil, so that, that's tragic. Well, yeah. Imagine a world where Vanquish Soul didn't have back row and these were just monsters. Like, uh, just for example, Divine, level 50, uh, I don't know, monster with this effect, but discards instead of needing to be set and whatnot. And, yeah. Maybe it also says something like, you can only activate on your opponent's turn or something. 
doesn't super matter to me, but then yeah, at least it'd be recyclable off of rock. Even if it's like super slow and painful, it, it's still something. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, focus this thing up a bit more. Let, let's see. Um, Vanquish Soul is like kind of close. Doesn't quite get there, but it gets like most of the way there. So that's kind of helpful. But if we're thinking about like continuous effects, like if we go with, for example, uh, Shadal. I don't know how to spell Shadal. Let's see, Shadal. It, it, no, it's one word. Okay. I thought maybe it had a weird accent in it or something, right? Oh, whoops. Shadal with two Ds. Okay. So, if we have Shadal Schism, it has essentially two activations on it. This will only be like for one turn, but during the main phase, you infusion summon one Shadal Fusion Monster from your extra deck. So we activate Shadal Schism and then we can activate the effect in a separate chain. So that's essentially two effects for you're finished. So if there is a good deck that does this, this is actually kind of worth consideration. Then you send to the graveyard one monster your opponent controls with the same attribute as that fusion summoned monster. Wait, what? Is this in a new chain? There's a period here. I think this is all sim chain because there's no like other semicolon here. Uh, because otherwise this would be like three. I, I guess it wouldn't be three then. So, hmm, yeah, I guess. Uh, all right then. So should Dahl actually might be able to do this now, now that I think about it. So, hmm. Neat. Is this in Master Bag or something? No? Okay. So, hmm. Well, I mean, so far we've seen things that can just like kind of set it up, right? Like, I guess Branded might be decent. It might be able to do enough effects. But, uh, the thing I'm worried about right now is just if there's anything in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! that can trigger this in, like, draw phase. If there was just a really dumb loop that accomplishes nothing, I think we might be able to do it. How does Mirror Jade even work? I don't think this works like how I would probably attempt to do this, so no. Okay. But now that I think about if you special summon something with like a mandatory effect, like this would be hella annoying, but this is actually a mandatory effect, right? You make puppet nightmare, I believe. If this card is special summon, you cannot special summon any monsters for the rest of this turn except for gimmick puppets. Or gimmick puppet monsters. Uh, does that start a chain? This card's actually so old, right? Let's see. No, this... Does this not start a chain? It doesn't have a colon on it. I guess it doesn't start a chain. What, weird. I thought it did. Huh. I guess it doesn't. But if there was something mandatory that... Did stir chain. I guess you would activate it, right? So that that works, I guess. Okay. If you were to like, uh, Lubellion, like, whichever Lubellion it was, what was it called again? Is it not Lubellion? Was it another Albion? Wait, what? Oh, I was. Oh, it, it's an Albion, huh? Albion the Sanctifier Dragon. Ah, th this was a Lubellion for whatever reason, but okay. So, this could trigger some mandatory effects. This is also one chain. And let's assume you summon, like, maybe, uh, let's say, I don't know. All in the Velbaz off of this, then you can summon your finish later in the chain. I don't remember. When I tested this, I think 
I, I was unable to activate this like during the chain, but after I activated a few more cards in the same chain, I was able to special summon your finished. So I'm not sure if that's a bug or intentional, but I mean, in that case, it, this wouldn't matter because this is a when, right? So you would still need your opponent. Well, you would need to summon this before your opponent takes whatever their action is, so. A little bit awkward, so. But we're realistically just going to need something that activates even more than these guys. Is there really a deck that actually activates, like, this many chains? Like, just around 10 before your opponent can, like, take an action? So, something like that. Well, actually, if we're trying really hard on this one, Time Thief uh, helps a little bit. So if we read Doer effect, that, that will be... Uh, one at least, right? And then Redoer has another effect. So that that's two. So that, that, that's honestly not enough, is it? Hmm. Yeah, I don't think it's enough, is it? And then you can also have, for example, Time Thief Flyback, I believe, right? You can manage this card from the graveyard, target one time, deflect so easy monster you can control, attach one card from your opponent's graveyard to it as material. So that would only be about three with, with Time Thief. If you run this, does this do anything? No. How about this one? Uh, that, that, that doesn't quite do it either. So, alright. Wait, what does it say? Didn't target one time thief bonds in your graveyard? Special summon that monster. This is just generically time thief. So, if we special summoned like time thief winder, that could trigger winder. So that's like one, two, three, four, and then like five ish. Uh, okay, buddy. Uh, yeah, that that's not gonna do it, is it? So honestly, I just can't think of like a deck that plays this much on your opponent's turn. Like, if we just look at tier limits though, how many effects can tier limit even activate on your turn? So let's assume, best case scenario, your opponent has Pearl Arena with their tier end board because just we, we got we gotta, I guess, right? So let's assume we do this. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's say, how, how do we start this? On, only just one happiness, alright? I, I guess that, that makes sense, so. It's either happiness or, like, maybe a copy of Scream, but whatever. Let's say you, uh, normal summon Moji or something. Uh, activate happiness, okay. Happiness effect, that is one, and then mill. This will trigger Scream as well, so mill again, so that's two effects. And then we'll be able to summon Kikalos because we milled Sharon, so that is three. And then Kikalos effect, four. And then Pearl Arena effect, it says, what, if a two of monster you control or in your graveyard is shuffled into the deck, or extra deck. You can target one card on the field, destroy it. So we're going to probably shuffle back Havness, I guess. So we can send Havness. Okay. So, anyway. Let, let's count. So, one, two, three, four, five. And then next chain, Kikelos effect to mill is six. And Kikelos is going to send... Let, let's assume we're going to just RNG good. We're, we send tier cash. And then this will uh, send... At some point, uh, Havness, so that's uh, only up to 8 right now. So, if we mill, like, one more card that can trigger, they'll only put us at 9, and then we'll summon Rukelos as well, and that doesn't trigger anything. So, surprisingly, I believe we're probably going to be one short, or we're barely going to get there if we high roll this hard, where, to the point where we summon Tear Cash, right? If we also mill, like, a Rhino, potentially, instead of, like, Havness, I guess that would put us at 10, right? 
So that's tier events if you high roll, by the way. And that's not quite 10. And you might have like a copy of Salik already in hand. So Scream might be able to trigger. It's still like a little bit iffy on that. Meta Noise. Uh, let's see. This can trigger potentially as well. So it's like, clo like close to 10-ish. If your opponent does something and we have Perlerino. Keeping in mind Perlerino is at 1. So that, that's awkward. If we mill Trivi Karma and not Perlerino, we can technically add Perlerino off of Trivi Karma, I guess. But I mean... Still pretty awkward. No, not quite there. So, we, we need something that can play on our opponent's turn even more than this. Like... Bro, a tier limit can barely... Barely meet the condition for this. And let, let's assume the Moyu doesn't activate for whatever reason. Opponent misclick, so that, that that's just around 10. If our opponent did activate Moyu effect, I think that would put us at around 10. So that that's pretty interesting, I guess. So I'm going to just scroll through my UR list right now to see if there's anything that sticks out as just some way we could trigger a bajillion effects. Even if we look at DDD, like, DS Machinex triggers like four times, I think. But it wouldn't really matter anyways, right? Because our opponent probably can't play after a DDN board anyways, if we activate like 10 DD effects, right? So, hmm, that, that that's not gonna do it. Uh, what, what about Cybers, actually? Uh, activate Super Factorial, activate Effect of Laplacian, activate the Sevworm, activate uh, Terahertz, activate Eat Soul, I think. So, that, that, that's still only like 5. Not, not even close. Uh, Alright. Let, let's assume by some unholy act of god, you also have Promethean Princess as well. So, uh, like 6, and then like the Omni Negate, 7. Yeah, the, not, not that close. And then also, let, let's assume you have uh, the uh, Omni Negate as well. That would only put you at 8. Wow, crazy. And then the Sevworm itself. And then also, uh, if you send Argentum, like barely 10 if we somehow have Promethean Princess in the graveyard, which you can't even special summon, pretty much, because you have like a weird Cybers lock to deal with, right? And Cybers lock in general, so. Yeah, that doesn't really work, does it? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. How about this? If this card is special summoned, roll, die, uh-huh, destroy the two cards on the field. If this card is sent to the graveyard, roll, up, die, and if you roll this, special summon this card, the player who summoned it cannot special summon for the extra deck while it's face up in the monster zone. Just a hard ones per turn on this. Well, whatever. Is this mandatory? Yeah, the, the, these effects are hella mandatory. Interesting. What about Orcus, maybe? So if we do, like, Orcus Nightmare, send Harp, Harp, Special Summon, Girsu, Girsu effect, just uh, send, uh, the, uh, what's it called? Bombard, I think, or something? Symbol Skeleton? No, Symbol Skeleton. Okay, Symbol Skeleton effect. That is like five. Symbol skeleton effect to summon Gusu. That's like six. And then like Galatea effect to shuffle back to like set a card that's like uh seven. Oh actually. Orcus can do it then. Wow. Yeah, this works. Hmm. Well, Orcus so far is like the best candidate I've seen. And th this is a dark monster, right? Yeah, so you can actually summon this. You're only dark locked. Yo, all right. That, that, that's cooking something. And then you also usually have like Verte, DP, and then like IP as well. So I, I think with this, that barely puts you at enough. Surprisingly enough, right? And then like whatever you summon off of IP, assuming Unicorn. Yeah, that's definitely 10, right? And what if we're looking at maybe ninjas? Okay, so. Activating the Continuous Trap, that's only one activation for ninjas, so that's a shame, but whatever. Okay. Special Summon Geo. Pass. 
Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, all right. I activate Geo, so that's like two. So, so yeah, th th that's definitely not ten. Wait, is there something that activates every single chain? Hold up, I, I need to check this. What was this called again? Safer, or no, it's not safer. It's stellar Wind Wolf Ray it. You normally control this each time another monster's effect is activated while the attack of this card is less than 4,000. Uh, does this... Th th this doesn't have a chain for this effect, so pointless. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, um... Is there anything else that just racks up chains in a stupid one? Oh, wait a second! Of course, I'm stupid. This makes a lot of sense. Ishtira Ariser, every single time a card gets sent to the graveyard, mandatory effect to attach a guy. Right. Wait, is this playable in cash then, maybe? Uh, let, let's just assume our opponent do, does something for us to cash all over. Okay, so. Let, let's see. But let's assume we have, like, a semi-decent end board, right? So we have access to tier cash. Okay, let's see, so... First activation, we activate Shangri Era. We'll special summon probably Unicorn, okay? And we'll probably have access to Ogre, I guess, right? Last turn. And we already have Fenrir. And we probably have Big Bang in the graveyard already. So then we can prep to special summon. But we can use this as two effects with prep, right? So let, let's see. One. And then we also have possibly rates off. Let's throw in rates off for fun. Okay, so. Great stuff will probably just target Shangri Era to pop, and then this will trigger uh, a Rise Heart as well. So that is th three chains off of just this one effect, essentially. Okay. Shangri Era. Okay. Detach. But, but when will that happen? Uh, same time. So a Rise Heart only activates once, I believe. Okay. Does it? Wait a second. Yeah, it was going to activate off of rates off anyways, so. One, two, three, and then we're going to, like, uh, activate prep. So that's four. Activate prep effect to summon in a new chain. That should be five. Tier of the main cash gets special summoned. That is six. And then effect of tier cash, right? So that will trigger uh, a rise art, so that will be seven. And then we can actually use a Rise Heart effect later a little bit. And that will trigger Big Bang effect as well. So that's one, two. And then that will trigger a Rise Heart. Okay, so yeah, the, the, we haven't even activated Unicorn, Ogre, or Fenrir. And that'll put us at around, yeah, like 10. Okay. And of course, there are more activations on a Rise Heart that can probably happen. So, well, the, the, the obvious glaring issue with this is simply, yo, uh, all right, let's be real. Can your opponent even play, like, just against just a single Arise Heart anyways? So, hmm. Okay, can they deal with a single Arise Heart? Well, the answer is if they cannot, then. Your finished isn't really going to be adding that much. So... Yeah, that, that's a bit awkward, I guess. Hmm. But on the bright side, it, it does set up your finished. Yay! We finally found a deck that's actually able to somewhat consistently do this. I think this is doable with just two card combo. I don't think it's doable with one card. So if we open like Raids Off plus Fenrir, I'm pretty sure uh, if our, we also have your finished in this hand, we can like do what I just said, right? Pretty reasonably. So that that that's always great, I guess. But uh, hmm, not a hundred percent sure where this goes. But all right, anything else? Hmm. Well, there is a troll idea, right? Maybe does Apollosa activate on yourself? No. All right. Is there something that's really dumb that actually can trigger multiple times on your opponent's turn? Like, I just can't think of anything right now, right now, but 
I'm sure there must be something. Ideally, it, it should trigger, like, a lot of times, you know? But even if it does, there's no way one card can trigger, like, you're finished. Surely, so. That's pretty awkward. Hmm. I think, like, the idea of using Snake Eye is probably the best for your finished. Like, just some sort of Snake Eye build is probably the most, like, somewhat reasonable way to do this. So, for the time being, I'll probably test out, like, Orcist, and then I'll, uh, try, uh, maybe, uh, I guess, Snake- well, yeah, the idea might be just Snake Eye Orcist. If we do Snake Eye Orcist, we 100% get to 10, like, no question about it, I think, right? Yeah. So, we'll, we'll have to give it a good old try when I have, uh, the Snake Eye card. So right now I'm waiting for at least the next selection before I craft Snake Eye, so well, we'll see how it goes. So, uh, yeah. I'll see you guys in the next video, and if you have any ideas to trigger your finish, feel free to share in the comments below. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!